Should the government mandate personal safety? There are laws on the books that say bicycle and motorcyclists should wear helmets, drivers should wear seat belts, sugary drinks and fatty foods need extra taxing. Should smoking be banned, knowing that it causes cancer? Should opioid prescriptions be limited? How dare you legislate my personal risky behavior if it only harms me? This is Counterpoint with Gerard McClendon. Should my personal risky behavior be punishable if it only harms me? Why should you care if I don't wear a seat belt or consume sugary drinks? Thank you for watching CounterPoint. Give us a call, 844-777-9311. Hey, send me a tweet at Gerard MC, and I'm on Facebook at Gerard MC as well. At the CounterPoint, three of the most opinionated people in the Midwest. I've got former Indiana State Trooper and Chicago Police Officer Corey Braddock. I've got author and creative Charles Burns Jr. and artist, producer from Art Science Inc., and a guy who just happens to have my last name, Theodore the Thinker McClendon. Gentlemen, welcome to the Counterpoint. Hello. Thank you. Appreciate Be here. you being here. This is, this is an august panel and a very august situation that we have with this topic of personal responsibility and should the government be able to mandate my personal risky behavior. So, I want to start with Ralph Nader, all right? Ralph Nader, of course, he's run for president several times, and Ralph Nader has always been kind of a town crier for, you know, civil rights and human rights. Um, uh, before seat belts were mandated, Ralph Nader was the one that said automobiles should have seat belts. So for the most part, his lobby is the reason why we have seat belts in cars today and why we have to buckle up. So. We know that seatbelts save lives. I'm going to start with seatbelts. Should the government be able to mandate that behavior? Uh, should a cop be able to pull Gerard or any of you over saying, sir, 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 you didn't have your seatbelt on. Uh, am I within my rights to not wear the seatbelt? What do you guys think? Well, it, uh, let me chime in right away. The seatbelt has been proven to work. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a case study in that. Uh, years ago, we were uh, visiting you in college, mm -hmm. and you and one of your classmates and myself, you, and, you were in the front, classmate was driving. Yeah. Actually, he had just bought a car. He yeah. graduated with his very prestigious Wabash degree. Yeah. So he got a job right away, had a nice car. We're going down to Wabash. I'm in the back seat, yeah. sitting in the middle. And for a while, I didn't have the seatbelt on, because mm. I'm talking with you two. Mm -hmm. But then just, I said, let me buckle up. You know, because I remember seeing all the movies and Driver's Ed and, you know, about the yeah. you know, people being maimed, yeah. et cetera. So I, I put them on before I dozed off. Couldn't have been more than 15 minutes later, somebody came uh, perpendicular to us on a yeah. country road. You may remember that day. Yeah. And our guy uh, hit the brakes really hard. I could have easily been straight through that window. Could have been dead. So, okay, easily. so we know that safety is important. We Absolutely. Know we know that saving a life is important. Yes. But should it be mandated? Corey Braddock. Well, let's just make it real simple. Wearing a seatbelt, it is it's proven to be uh, helpful, but this is the reason why. If you don't um, maintain control of your vehicle and you hit a bump, and then you steer or veer to hit someone else. That risky behavior affects everyone on the road. Mm -hmm. And so it is for the purpose of maintaining control. So should the government regulate your behavior? It regulates the behavior of those who are most risk risky in society and who violate the social contract. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to operate your vehicle safely, you shouldn't be on the road. So. If you are a danger and a police officer sees that, yeah, it's uncomfortable to be stopped, mm -hmm. but you are not putting yourself alone at risk. Looks like we have two votes for, and so then Theo has a, 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 an actual case study and real life situation that proves it as well. Charles Burns, should it be mandated? You know, uh, I have a hot rod. Uh, 
you know, it's a nice sunny day, you know, I might want to hit that gas pedal, don't want the restriction of, uh, you know, what do you think? You know, I've, I've always been one to take controlled risk, mm -hmm. and I, I would have to agree with them that, and especially what uh, Corey just mentioned, that if you getting into an accident could cause you to lose control of the vehicle, or you hitting a bump, hitting a, pot, a pothole, and you lose control of the, of the vehicle and hit someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, if you got hit and your hands flew off the wheel because you're shifting in the seat, mm -hmm. uh, definitely, I, I think it, it's, it's common sense. Okay, so what about helmets? I'll go through helmets real quickly. Now, now some states' helmets aren't required. Shouldn't states be required, you know, for riding a motorcycle in every state? Uh, well, uh, let me say this. States are sovereign entities. They're sovereign entities. That are made up of different people who think differently. But, Corey, I have to wear a seatbelt in a car, but I don't have to wear a helmet on a bike? If you want to kill yourself, blow your brains out. So you think that that person has that, has that right? The, the, to kill to not wear To not wear a helmet? No, I didn't oh, say that. You're not saying that? No, what I am should saying... Should they or should they not... Should it not be mandated, fifth, all 50 states, okay. for a helmet to be worn by a motorcycle? Okay, but you, you're neglecting the fact that people put in legislation, those folks who represent them, to create these laws in the first place. Mm -hmm. So one person cannot mandate, or one person, a governor or a group of people, can't mandate it. There has to be negotiations in these laws. The legislative process has to occur. So what you're asking is not going to ever, ever happen. I'm asking you, though. Okay, and you're asking a person that understands the legislative process, okay. and that's not reality. Well, okay. I'll just say on, on that one, for me, that's a common sense one. Mm -hmm. When I see someone riding down the expressway especially, but uh, an accident can happen inside the city. It can happen a block away from your house. But riding down the expressway, got your wife or your girlfriend on the back, or vice versa, the, the, these days the woman, she's, she's handling the Harley, mm -hmm. and you got someone on the back, neither person has on their helmet, one slight move could be splattered all over the road. Yeah. To me, that's another common sense item. I think that definitely, if you're on a motorcycle, you should have on a helmet. Okay, let's look at uh, cigarette smoking. We know it causes cancer. We know this. Cigarettes are legal. Should cigarettes not, should cigarettes be legal? Or should we just tax them so high that's a sumptuary or that's a sin tax that we punish the person for buying the cigarettes. So we say, we're going to tax you galore. And if you want to kill yourself by smoking a pack a day, go ahead. Well, what we're do doing that of? already. Well, uh, OK. I I'm thinking of something else when you talk about cigarettes. I'm thinking of so many establishments now that don't allow smoking. Mm -hmm. And they don't because of second degree smoke. Right. Or what do they call second it? Hand? Secondhand. Secondhand mm -hmm. smoke. Uh, which I think is a very good law or policy, as it, as it were. It's not just personal. It's not just personal, because you're infringing on the breathing space, the airspace, if you will, of other individuals. Uh, as far as making smoking illegal or taxing, it's kind of being taxed as it is, yeah, pretty high, 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 pretty highly. And so um, I, I think the status quo is fine when it comes to that. But it's, it's when you smoke in the presence of others, especially children, mm -hmm. that uh, it can become problematic, mm -hmm. and that should be sanctioned, no doubt. Sugary drinks. There's no secondhand smoke with a sugary drink. Uh, the city of Chicago and Cook County, they're thinking about, this is a referendum, thinking about putting an extremely high tax on sugary drinks. They're thinking about adding one to two cents per ounce on a sugary drink. So that's an extra 12 cents or an extra 24 cents on a can of pop. The sugary drink is nice to drink, all right? If you don't overindulge in a sugary drink, it's not really harming you. What do you guys think about a, ta a sumptuary sin tax on sugary drinks? Uh, well, plain and simple. <laughs> Those people who um, have come up with this, that whatever the um, motivation for, whether the county needs money, which they do, city needs money, which they do, um, should, uh, what reasons, what are, they, what are their motivations? Should they even be in office? Vote them out if you don't think it. Yeah. So sometimes the sumptuary or sin tax isn't to help the no, people, it's, it's to tax the people and then you put it under the guise. That's the excuse. Wow. So you're taxing a habit. You're taxing That's guaranteed to create money. 
Yeah. For Absolutely. people who are overspending. Yeah. Gambling. Let's talk about it. There's casinos all through Chicago land. It's a sin tax. It's um, uh, when you go in there, when you cross over into the boat, uh, you're basically taxed. When you lose your money, you're basically taxed. Uh, should gambling be legal, first of all? Let me go down the line. Yes or no? Should it be legal outside of Las Vegas? It's See, a yes or no question. I, yeah, I, but I have a yes. I have a go yes ahead. on one on one hand go as ahead. far as looking at it uh, from a from a generic standpoint, uh, from a faith standpoint, of course. Uh -huh. Then I would say, yo, know, it 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 should be outlawed. From other, otherwise, I'd say, you know what? You can't legislate morality to a certain degree. Um, so then, if that's what people want to do, if they want to give their money away, then you know. So be it. Yeah, Theo, what do you think? Oh, yeah, gambling should definitely be legal in, in all 50 states. Wow, all 50? All 50 states, gambling should be legal. And it doesn't have to be just water-based? They could be land-based as well? Land-based, water-based, air-based. Air-based. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lying casino. You see what I'm saying? You know? a casino on the moon or Can something. Can you elaborate on you, that? You, yeah, yeah, please. Why? <laughs> Why? Um, because... Your own self control can can warrant against any any harm coming to you. Well, I, I for, for instance, I used to live in Las Vegas. I became immune to gambling. I mean, you lose a couple of times and you're immune, you know, unless you really need to go see a, a psychiatrist or something. Right. But I, I, I saw it as no problem, and I saw the there was no sales tax there or no uh, income tax oh. there. Okay, and it, it benefited. Uh, the benefit of the society or, or, or other cities like cities like Hammond is benefiting Hammond. So the right? CBA, the cost benefiting benefit Gary, analysis but it's outweighed the sin, right? In my eyes, indeed. Wow. Corey, what do you think? I don't care. You I don't, don't care. gamble. You don't gamble. I lived in Las Vegas and not didn't put ever one red cent in a slot. Wow. That's my choice. choice. I'm not going to throw my hard earned little money away. So, Charles, you got a point to make. I, I, I guess I, I kind of understand the, the perspective of, you know what, if that's what people want to do. Uh, again, I, I have a, a, a two-dimensional two view on that. Why is it two-dimensional? Come on well, now. Don't because, go black and white well, on me. <laughs> why, well, why don't you stick well, to the, here's, no, here's, no, stick, here's, no, here's no, my stick to the faith view. Stick here's, to the faith view. Here's my hard line, which is the faith view. My hard line is, is that some things that you legalize, people become introduced to it or people venture into it who otherwise would not have mm. uh, once it's widespread, uh, which I, I feel that same way about the legalization of marijuana. You think legalization is a gateway for, I, I for think people definitely. to experiment? I, I think, I, absolutely. I think if we were still in prohibition for alcohol, I think you would have a lot, of, a lot fewer people who would drink. But if they had to sneak and, and, yeah. and do whatever they had to do to find it, you would have fewer people who would be willing to take that risk. But I know I can go to Colorado right now. Now, you know where I'm going? I got to go to commercial break in a minute. Oh, yeah. I know I can go to Colorado right now. I can get on a plane, land in Denver. I can find me some weed. Rocky I, Mountain but high. it's legal in Colorado, but I haven't gone yet to indulge because I really don't have a desire to smoke marijuana. So but it's not it a gateway. It's not a gateway for me. But if it were next door, it may perhaps not you. If it were down the street, perhaps mm -hmm. not you. How many more people would figure, you know what, I just want to experiment. I, I just, just want to see what it's I, like. I could just go to Pookie for that. Well, <laughs> but no, Pookie still, that, that still, that still wears a stigma. The stigma is still there. So you oh. may not indulge because of the stigma. But when wow. it's legalized and the government said it's okay, you know, the guy down on the corner, it's a legitimate business. It's okay. So, you know, I think maybe I'll at least try it. Wow. The gateway is being a human being. Whatever your environment and what you're exposed to is what you're gonna do. Wow, wow, Jao Rastafari, you guys just, <laughs> you guys just hold on with me. Thank you for watching Counterpoint. Hey, we'll be back shortly. Tweet me, post on Instagram, or send me a message on Facebook. Let's start the conversation. Your voice is important on Counterpoint. Should my personal risky behavior be punishable 
if it only harms me. Why should you care if I don't wear a seatbelt or if I consume sugary drinks? Thank you for watching CounterPoint. Give us a call at 844-777-9311. Tweet and send Facebook comments to Gerard MC. I've got Corey Braddock. I've got Charles Burns and Theodore McClendon joining us at the CounterPoint. Spirited discussion, gentlemen. I'm loving the joust the sobering commentary as well as uh, hilarious commentary here, but on a very serious subject though. And we wanna talk about alcohol a little bit later on, but let's look at one that's very, very serious. Opioids and opioid prescriptions. Um, we've all been in situations where we've had intense pain, uh, broken arm, uh, cancer diagnosis, uh, you could have some aggravating pain in your body, and you go to the doctor. Doctor gets a sheet of paper out, scribbles on it, you go to a drugstore. Now, you may get 30 pills, okay, it could be Vicodin, it could be Percocet, uh, which is a narcotic, mm -hmm. it could be uh, a hydrocodone, Oxycontin, but you may only need 10 or five, but you get 30. Should there be a limit to opioid prescriptions, gentlemen? And I'm gonna let you think about it for a little while because, man, I can't believe I'm saying this on air. When I had cancer, I had access to opioids. I had to force myself once the chemo cycles were over, I had to force myself not to take prescriptions anymore because the opioid is so amazing. Mm -hmm. You need five, you get 30. It's like, really? So, gentlemen, should there be a limit to opioids? Should you have to go back for another prescription or should they just give you the maximum number on the first prescription? Uh, I think they should definitely limit it and perhaps there's uh, some kind of scheme underlying there to, uh, to create and say, oh, play the dumb smart. Oh, we didn't know that that was gonna happen, mm -hmm. but play the dumb smart, hoping you would get addicted to it mm -hmm. because one of the biggest businesses globally mm -hmm. is pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. And if they can keep you on them, keep you coming back, I mean, that, that just goes, it goes along with continuing their calls. Yeah, um, and, and, it can be a, and, and you mentioned gateways earlier. Sometimes mm -hmm. if people misuse them, that, they can be a gateway because once the person is off of them, they may go to heroin. And, we, and we, right. we've seen this, they need crystal meth. We, we, we've seen this occur, Theo. It's kind of scary, you know, because, um, you know, I was prescribed some of those old opioids. And I got to the pharmacist. And the dude gave me a black light poster and some hindrance. Oh, you cut that out. <laughs> you cut that out. That's what someone wants to do. All I want is, I'm I just want to get let, well. I'm not going to let you get away with that, man. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. I'm not going to let you get away with that because this is a very serious oh. matter. You know, what do you think, Corey Braddock? You've been in law enforcement. You've been in insurance. Yes. People uh, can, of course, benefit from opioids, but people can also use the opioid just to get high. So in law enforcement, what do you do with a person who is addicted to narcotics? Well, like, just so that I can establish a baseline, the money's in the medicine, not the cure, mm. okay? And money makes the world go, to, go around. I believe women make the, the world go around, but money is what we think makes the world go around. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about treating addiction, there's a whole industry that supports not just the pharmaceutical companies, but the people who are making money off of those individuals who are sick. And when we talk about poverty, and we talk about people who use drugs, those people who use these opi opioids, heroin, and other uh, illicit narcotics, you know, it's a reason. They can't go to a doctor, so they have to treat their pain, mm. and their pain is their existence. So what are they supposed to do? See, I look at things from a completely different perspective, all right? And, and this is a serious um, 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 uh, topic, but most people don't want to look at the root cause. The only reason why we talk about opi opioids right now is because people who can afford to go to the doctor are overdosing and dying and, you know, right. don't nobody care about all those 
folks who live in neighborhoods who yeah. don't have doctors and they don't care about because they've been marginalized. They're not counting those deaths. Mm -hmm. They're only counting the deaths of the people who make money in society, who pay taxes, and who have jobs. EpiPen, Norco, uh, you know, if, if you're overdosing in the hood, they throw you in jail. Yeah, no, you know, no, no, no. If they, you they over, you yeah, overdosing yeah, in the, you overdosing in the suburbs, they're trying to get you a cure. Absolutely. Wow. This, this is interesting. Good point. What do you think about alcohol? Should alcohol be illegal, or just yeah. use? You know, you, I mean, if, of course, you know, prohibition. You know, you got rid of all that. But should it be illegal? Yes or no? Or should there be an age I, limit? I, I, age I don't, limit. I don't age don't limit. Age limit. Absolutely. Age limit. Okay. Age limit. Absolutely. Your twelve-year-old in France. Drinks wine, though. Mm, no, age limit, absolutely. Okay. Twelve year of wine, you know, table with your parents, it's kind of different. And occasions. Yeah. But, you know, just to go get a fifth or something. Yeah. That, that needs to have an age limit. Not sipping lean. No, uh, can't be doing that. With, with Sprite. No. Not, not, not mixing a Kool-Aid with, uh, with malt liquor, right? No, can't do that, you know. It's, there should be age limits. Corey. You know, when we talk about regulation, we're just talking about basically the people who are imposing those regulations, their perspective on everybody else. If you are responsible to be raising your children and you're responsible and you're living in your household and your community, it's a responsible one. You feel that these restrictions are not necessary. Uh, however, like I said, society's in the business of managing risk and we don't want those who are careless about their risk that can bring about danger to us. We need to have these controls. So, you know, we can, you know, segment you know, uh, these laws as much as you want and break it in, but they're always going to be targeted at a particular group. And that's the t that's, those are the groups that are not in control and who need to be controlled. When I was a police officer in Indiana, in the highways of uh, uh, Peru and uh, Wabash County, mm -hmm. oh man, it was nice and lovely. I didn't have very much to do, but when I was on the west side of Chicago, oh, I was policing hard yeah. and I was controlling people who were marginalized in society. So can people self-mandate. This is where, and I, I'm loving the three of you because this is where I want the conversation to go. <sighs> Do we have to teach people to mandate or to, to regulate themselves? Or do we need laws and restrictions to help them regulate and manage their, their th themselves? I think definitely we ought to invest as a society more in, in to the first part of your statement, helping people to learn how to manage themselves. Uh, this even extends over into the conversation about gun control, mm -hmm. uh, because we're talking about guns falling into the wrong hands. We're talking about the violence. Uh, it's been, uh, Corey it, it, uh, was a police officer in South Side of Chicago. It's big in the news right now, mm -hmm. actually, you know, South and West, mm -hmm. uh, but they just call it the South. Mm -hmm. uh, but in any case, I think that both sides, as, as far as in the, in the two main political parties, uh, they're talking about a solution that is not a solution, but it's a Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. They're talking about pro-guns or putting laws on, on the guns, but nobody's talking about how to fix the family mm. because it's out of the broken family that the criminal comes. Wow. You believe that? Well, that's that's evident. And if you so, you believe that if we have a broken family and you have a criminal, the criminal is not able to self-regulate, and the criminal wreaks havoc on the neighborhood, and then society in that particular uh, sphere is out of kilter. Well, it's not that he can't self-regulate. They it's, choose it's, not to, or they, maybe that's the maybe choice. That's their, it's e the choice becomes easy. You think it's a choice or a circumstance? It's though? always a choice. A really? Human, I think a human being operates on the highest level of being able to choose among all the crea creature, creatures in creation. And so what separates me from the ape is that I'm not simply driven by instinct. Oh. I have an ability to choose. If I choose right or wrong, I, I still have the ability yeah. so, to choose. So if I'm a tiger, I'm, I'm born a carnivore. But if I'm a deer, I like grass. I can't be taught. Or is that just innate? I got to keep it moving. Corey, you had a comment. I, I just I, simply disagree. You have people who are, when we talk about criminals in society, mm -hmm. I look like them. Most of them look like me in jail. And I put a lot of them in there. Mm -hmm. OK? And when you're too busy trying to survive, how can you think? I'm a substitute teacher in the city of Chicago. And children control the classroom. Children do. Mm -hmm. Teachers are afraid 
to talk to kids. I can't even use the word idiot because they, it's like calling them the M word. Mm -hmm. I said M, not N. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you are, a lot of the teachers don't want to have this discussion and teach them what an idiot is mm -hmm. because they're gonna go and run and tell their parents. The kids who are in school are not being trained. They are not, they're controlling they it. They can't self-regulate. And that's they why they don't had, because they're they, running the narrative. They haven't had a concept of self-regulation and Theo. Yeah, and, and, and I agree with that because when you're not taught early about how to conduct yourself, how to have decorum, how to, how to use the language, how to be a decent human being, you're, you're gonna run amok. Uh, then you're beyond self-regulation, mm -hmm. uh, free will or not. Naturally, we do have free will, of course. That is one of the, the gifts or maybe even the curses of humanity. However, your, your free will is skewed by your upbringing. Mm. And by your environment and surroundings, so you 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 see with muddled judgment. But then, aren't we still talking about making it easier to make different choices or to make poor choices, as opposed to it being impossible mm -hmm. for them? Because I think that's well, the human di oh, that's the human me, dynamic. Me, yeah, I, we we we're running out of time, I'm gentlemen. Sorry. We're running out of time. Uh, you know, um, this is tough. This is tough. Uh, I got to close the show now. I got to get part two for you guys because this, this is some big conversation whether personal behavior should be mandated and regulated or whether people should be able to self-regulate. Man, thanks to my guests, Corey Braddock, Charles Burns, and Theodore McClendon. You can't force people to do anything. You can only influence people to do the right thing. But your right thing may be different from my right thing. Sugary drinks, smoking, not wearing helmets and seat belts, and gambling all your money away aren't edifying in the least. But the government can't police your personal vices. But don't be surprised if sin taxes are assessed to remind you of your bad behavior. Freedom is twofold, and sometimes what not to do is more powerful than what to do. Thank you for watching Counterpoint. I need you to stay positive, keep your head up, and always be encouraged to voice your counterpoint. Have a great week.